Welcome to my channel. Our topic today is Top 10 Forbidden Colors. Enjoy watching. In the 16th century, a new shade of brown paint started appearing in European art called Mummy Brown. You may think this is simply a creative name, but in fact, this paint was actually made of real crushed ancient Egyptians. In the 19th, Egyptomania spread across Europe and the United States, as people used mummies as decor, medicine, paper, and even party games at mummy unrolling events. The exact technique for preparing the color varied quite a bit, and today it is almost impossible to tell if a painting used the substance through any kind of analysis, but all of its variations included actual mummy. Vanta black is one of the darkest colors known to mankind. Developed by British company Surrey Nanosystems in the early 2000s, it can absorb 99.965% of visible light. It held the Guinness World Record for darkest man-made substance until a material with a much less catchy name known as Dark Chameleon Dimers knocked it out of the top spot in 2015. It can be used to keep light out of telescopes and infrared cameras and potentially collect solar energy. It may also have military applications, such as intense camouflage. Royal purple hues have been associated with nobility for centuries and the connection lingers to this day. During the Roman Empire, any non-noble who dared to try to wear purple could be executed. Queen Elizabeth I forbid anyone but her family from wearing it as part of the sumptuary laws that governed what each social class could wear. This reddish purple was even thought to look similar to dried blood, connecting royals to the idea of a divine bloodline. It became popular among the ruling class in Egypt, Persia, and the Roman Empire and carried through until the mid-1500s. Vermilion is also known by the names Cinnabar and China Red, but you definitely don't want to be mixing up any of it at home. Vermilion gets its red-orange hue from mercury, and the smaller the mercury particles are, the brighter red vermilion is. It has been used for close to 8,000 years, since ancient Romans retrieved it from Spain and used it in cosmetics and art. It was also used to illuminate medieval manuscripts. Prisoners and slaves were given the dangerous job of mining cinnabar in the Spanish mines of Almaden, and it was then heated and crushed to form pigment. It was also used in Renaissance painting and of course in China where it got its alternate name. There it was mixed with tree sap and used for temples, ink and pottery. In the early 1800s, a brand new dye swept the Victorian high society. German colormaker Carl Wilhelm Scheele released a shade of green so vibrant that it became the go-to of ladies attending parties across Western Europe. New gas lamp technology made nighttime events brighter and this emerald green was perfect to make a statement as a modern and fashionable woman. Soon Scheele's green was seen across Britain in dresses, wallpaper, carpeting, and artificial plants. As far back as the 4th century BC, the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians were using this thick white pigment for makeup, medicine, and paint. Ancient Greek authors Pliny and Vestruvius even described it in their writings. The process for making it was fairly simple, soak lead metal in vinegar and then scrape off the white powder that formed. Many manufacturers and artists developed what was called painter's colic, which we now recognize as lead poisoning. In 1936, the Fiestaware Ceramics Company started to come out with a bright new line of dinnerware. A bold orange-red color called Fiesta Red, these dishes started appearing in homes across America. The bright color came from uranium oxide, which is radioactive. From 1943 to 1959, the production of these orange dishes paused, as uranium was banned from civilian use to save it for the war effort. When they started production again, a different form of uranium was used, called depleted uranium, which is slightly less radioactive than the natural form.
In 1908, a very unique paint appeared. It was self-luminous and glowed a bright green in the dark, which was perfect for watches and compasses that could now be used at night. Radium appeared all over the market in the late 1800s to early 1900s, used in drinks, candy, creams and lotions, soap, spas, and swimming pools. The glowing, fizzling radium became connected with the idea of a healthy glow. The watches were first used for the military in World War I, and after the war, they began to spread to consumers. These two colors are not forbidden by any ruler or made of some deadly material. The problem with these colors is that they are almost impossible to see. Red and green cancel each other out inside of the human eye and blue and yellow do as well. The retinas of the human eye allow us to take incoming light and make specific neuron fire in the brain to recognize each color. But these pairs of colors inhibit each other in the brain, so they cannot be viewed simultaneously. In the 1600s, the British East India Company brought back a new bright yellow pigment from Asia. Gamboge was named after the country of Cambodia, which used to be called Kamaboja from the Latin word gambogium meaning pigment. It was collected as sap from bamboo shoots of trees at least 10 years and then turned into fine powder or hard rocks that could be wet to paint with. This sap was poisonous itself, but that was not the only reason that gamboge became unpopular. The color was used in traditional Chinese painting, but the color faded fast and can be hard to recognize today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.